Hello. Back out for another wild camp in the Peak District again, obviously. Uh, to be fair, I was planning on going up to the Lake District for a couple of days, but um, family and things like that, you know, real life stuff got in the way. So that'll have to wait for another time. So meanwhile, I am currently heading along the River Ashup, or the banks of the River Ashup. I've just come through Snake Woodland from the, I think it's Birching Clough Car Park. And the um, destination is somewhere where I have camped once before. I'm going back up to Fairbrook Nays to camp up there. Um, there's a video on my channel somewhere. Myself and my friend Paul camped up there a while back. Um, a beautiful spot. I've walked past, walked over there many times since, but I've never been back for another camp. So I figured I would put that right, seeing as I'm on quite short time now. It's um, currently, uh, what time is it? It's currently 10 to 4. Um, so I'm not in any particular rush. But I just don't have as much time as I expected. I might take a slightly longer route back tomorrow and head out along the northern edge a little bit and drop back down that way and come back through the, the, uh, the hill and the woodland on the other side of the Air 57. We'll see, see how we go. But for tonight, Fairbrook Nays is where I'm headed. And I have something new to show you when I get there, which I am very, very, very excited about. if you can make it out down there I'll try and zoom in somebody has been hossing it along the snake pass and come to a sticky end oh dear so let's come through the wall at the top and just slid down the hill oh dear oh dear So, after I uh, crossed the river, getting my feet wet, I uh, realised that I didn't actually need to cross that river. I should have gone around it. Um, and that would have taken me straight up Fairbrook Nays, which is now way, way over there. I realised after about 100 yards, and I looked and thought, oh, you muppet. And I was half tempted to turn back, but then I looked again, and actually, I've ended up coming up, ended up coming up, um, I think it was Birchside Clough, I think. And when I looked at it on the map, 
my original plan was to walk further along the A57, come across, and then come up over sort of past Blackton Barn, that sort of area, um, and come along Blackton Edge. But um, I changed my mind because I didn't think I'd have enough time. But actually, when I looked at the map, I thought, I'm not that far out. This is going to bring me out onto Seal Edge. So I'll take Seal Edge now along to Fairbrook Nays. But I also looked at it, and on the map I could see if I can get it in frame, that bloody steep hill up there at the end. The uh, the contour was nice and wide and then at the very end they just go squash. So it's really steep on the last bit and I thought that might be a bit of fun. A little bit of a challenge to add to the day. Flipping midges are doing my head in. I do have a net in my bag. I'm resisting. <laughs> I'm resisting putting it on. But I might have to give in soon. Right. Onwards. Now to Sea Ledge and then along to... Uh, Fairbrook Nays. Cheers. Behind me is the northern edge of Kinder Scout. I'm on Fairbrook Nays. A um, little bit back from the headland, there's a, a, a pitch that myself and Paul um, used when we uh, when we came here. I think that was the first night I had my trail star. And there's like a little sort of island, if you like, a little bit of a mini plateau on the end. And it was great. And we got both the trail stars pitched on there. I've just been to have a look and it's it's quite mossy and boggy and not very nice. So I've looked for somewhere else and then I remembered that I did come back here um, again and I've camped here a second time uh, with um, Bryn and Dan and uh, we pitched a bit further back and I'm pretty sure that's where I am now. If anybody knows the Fairbrook Nays, you'll know where I am. There's big rocks here and the, uh, the headland main mushroom toadstool, whatever you want to call it, rock is down there on the end. So yes, I've had a good walk up actually. Like I say, I went a little bit wonky when I crossed that river. Still got wet feet. Beauty wearing trail runners. Um, and I realised pretty much straight away that I, thought, I just looked down at the map and I thought, oh God, I've done it. I've gone the wrong way. And then I thought, well, I've crossed the river now. Um, do I really want to cross all the way across, across it again? Um, and then I had a quick look around and uh, I realised that I could get a half decent walk out of it. So I've ended up coming up, if I can show you on the, uh, the old camera. So just behind me here, if I turn up, go out of the way a bit, there's a seal stone, a seal edge, sorry. And then if you follow this all the way down to about there, that's seal stones. And I came up that slopey bit there in the middle and then along the top. And it's been a lovely walk actually. Midges were terrible down below, but as soon as I got up on the edge path, I got a bit of wind, it was, uh, it was fine. Anyway. Enough about that waffle, let's get to the important stuff. So, I mentioned in my last video that I was looking at other shelters. For the future, not just yet though, for the future. And my main, my main thoughts were towards the dual mid. I was thinking about the tarp tent strat, put your teeth in grim, tarp tent stratospire and the notch and a few others, but 
it was I was always coming back to the Geomed. And I was asking a few questions on um, a Facebook group, mainly because I'm a big lad. I'm six foot three. It's lots of shelters I don't fit in. So I was asking, you know, what would be the best combination? Would a Stratus bike be better than a Dewa made? What, should, what, what, what What's people's experience? And I was getting loads of really good, useful help and advice. And then I got a private message saying, I know where there's a Dewa made available if you want it. And it's a Dewa made XL. So it'll fit me. It's a Dewa made XL with a Dewa made XL DCF inner. And it's in, it's in DCF, it's in Cuban fiber. Do you want it? So I said, yes, please. And there it is. Now, I never expected to own an MLD Geomid. Oh my God, look at it. Uh, when I was doing this before, uh, I was, as I mentioned, I was a stay-at-home dad. I didn't have a huge amount of money. I, the thought of buying something like that then was just way off the scale. Things are different. Times have changed. Things have moved on. I hadn't budget. I hadn't planned on buying yet. I was looking towards the end of the year but this was available it's brand new it was bought in 2020 it's been pitched in the garden the guys put some guys on it the guys put some guys on it the fellas put some guys on it pitched it once in the garden to test it and that's it it's been in this cupboard ever since and he needed to sell it so um i bought it uh, i certainly didn't go it cheap uh, i maybe i saved a little bit over what it would have cost new most importantly though i saved um the three month wait um from from mld direct which is a massive advantage for me but it was a case of juggling stuff around can i do this yes i can if i just push a few things to the back burner so things like me sleeping mat has gone out the window i'm not getting i've had to go and buy um, an alp kit cloud base just to tide me over for now um and i'll pick a, 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 a thermo rest or something up later on so uh yeah it's um <laughs> quite exciting shall we have a look see what you think i'll turn the camera around to me there we go so what do we think? I've, um, the ground isn't, the pitch I'm on is not all that even, but um, I don't think I've done too bad. I could probably do a letting that centre one out a little bit, a little bit tight, but um, yeah, it's not three shabby. It's, it's big, but it's not that big. Do you know what I mean? When I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's far too big, but actually it's not that huge, although there is plenty of room in it. So yeah, I think I've done a, got a pretty good pitch. I've only pitched it in the, on the on the lawn in my garden before. So um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Let me switch that camera to a bit of a wider angle and we'll have a look inside. Yeah. So I'm using my pacer poles with a piece of join pole. It looks like it's wobbly there, uh, wonky there, but it's not. Um, Thank you to Peter Dixon for sending me that chunk of pole to um, join me poles. So that's um, a piece of people, a piece of Peter's purple pole. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. The space in here is phenomenal. I'm in that. Just there's just so much space, so much space. You can stuck a bit down there. There's more down here. It's um, it's wonderful, and obviously enough space for two sleep mats to push in there, and. Uh, just plenty of room for a, a big lanky bugger from the northeast like me. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really chuffed. I'm really chuffed. Uh, like I say, never thought it would happen, but it has. Anyway, let me have a show you around and then I'm gonna get some dinner on. So looking down the northern edge, that's down the A57. And then the edge of Kinder, at uh, the edge of uh, Fairbrook Days is, is down there. Um, might have a wander down there in the morning. And then over the back of me, it's looking very grey and bleak. Um, the sun is over there somewhere. I saw it a minute ago. So, but I don't think we're going to get much of a sunset tonight. I'm just going to um, get me uh, get myself set up, finish my beer, and get some dinner on. Happy, happy camper. I'll uh, come back and give you some more waffle and stuff in a bit. Cheers. So it's uh, 10 p.m. We've had more rain 
Um, no wind though, it's not windy at all, it's quite calm. Um, well, say quite calm, there's a breeze, it's keeping the midges away, put it that way. Um, so yeah, all ready for bed, 10 o'clock, got me jambies on, had me tea, fire pot, posh pork and beans. It was alright actually, tastes nice, um, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't fully cooked through. Um, the, uh, the beans were still a bit hard, so I need to put more, um, more water in next time, because it was dry. Um, I could have boiled a bit more water up and chucked it in, but I couldn't be bothered. So, but yeah, taste was alright actually, I quite liked it. Um, so yeah, dinner has been munched and it was tasty and stuff, and um, I'm fueled up and ready for sleep. I've just had a nip around the tent to tighten all the pegs up and what have you. And uh, there's somebody camping just at the end of the, well, top of Fairbrook Clough thing. Um, so they're probably only two or three, 300, 400 metres away from me. I'll just see a light on in the distance. So I'm assuming they can see my light too. We could do like flashing lights, like Morse code and stuff coming. Um, yeah, but other than that, I haven't seen anybody. When I... Um, on the walk, on the walk up from the bottom of um, from the bottom of the hill, I didn't see anybody. I saw a few people on the path as I was coming across that river and everything, but I saw nobody on the way up. Nobody coming along the edge path. Um, just after I got pitched, there was a couple walk down behind the tent. Um, I was actually on the phone to my wife. I just said hello, and uh, and I turned round again and caught the bloke taking a picture of me tent. Um, not that I don't mean that in a like, oh, I caught you, you shouldn't be doing that. I meant, I just, I think he was trying to take a sneaky pic and I just turned around in time to see him do it. Fine by me, if you want to take a photograph, take a photograph. Um, I saw one person coming up Fairbrook um, earlier on, so I'm guessing that's who's camping down there. Um, I think it was just one lad on his own. But yeah, it's been dead peaceful, been nobody, been great. Just the way we like it. Just the way we like it. So I've been listening to me podcasts and having me tea. Now I'm having me sleep. So I will speak to you. As long as we don't get a big storm. If I have a big storm in the night, I might come back and speak to you again then. But um, if not, I will speak to you in the morning. Ta-ra! <laughs>
my only experience of a mid prior to that was my Lux Mini Peak, which never went up very well. But I think that was because I was using the the manufacturer's supplied pole, which is a fixed length. So if the ground was uneven, you couldn't jack it up or lower it. Um, whereas that, with my two pacer poles joined together, I can just push it up a bit higher to accommodate for the slightly uneven ground. But it went up so well, I didn't have to do any faff with it. It was just straight up, <coughs> guys out, tweak, tighten everything up. And that was it, and it stayed there all night. Nothing's moved, nothing's budged. Um, and the wind got up a little bit at one point. There was some quite heavy gusts coming through. And uh, just doesn't, just felt really confident in it, you know, just reassuring. So yeah, happy days, happy days. Really good. I um, used that Alp kit cloud base sleep mat because obviously I've had to put my thermo rest on hold because somebody dangled that under my nose. Um, so I just nipped to the Alp kit shop in Hathersage the other day and picked up a, a cloud base. I think they're 44 quid, but there was a sale on and I got it for less than 40 quid. I mean, I can't, can't go wrong with that. If it you know lasts a couple of camps, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, no, I'd be a bit miffed if it only lasted two camps, but you know what I mean. Um, and it was actually all right, fairly comfortable. Um, a little bit of warmth in it as well, which was nice, but uh, yeah, it was all right. It was all right. Um, just, uh, I can't wait to get older something better though. But uh, yeah, on the whole, fantastic night, fantastic morning yet again. Beautiful. So fella camping up there, um, I could see lights on in the tent last night. Uh, looked a bit further away, but actually he's only probably two or three hundred meters away as the crow flies. Um, I can't see what tent he's got, it's quite small. And I'm not going that way, I'm going to go that way this morning. I'm taking the, um, I live in Sherwood Forest and the, they've got some English longhorn cows that they release into the forest every summer to um, control all the bracken and brambles and stuff. And uh, the kids want to go up and see them today, so I said I'd take them for a walk up in the forest, see the coos. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go direct route. I was going to have a walk along the northern edge, but being as I ended up coming up that way in the end last night, thanks to my slight navigational error, um, I figured I've, uh, I'm just going to drop straight back off the end of Fairbrook Nays and go back down the car and get off home. So yeah, time's now, uh, what time is it? It is half past six. So I'm gonna get packed up and um, get off this hill. Not in any rush though. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? Right, I'll catch you in a bit. Tara. That's it. Another night in the glorious Peak District. Um, obviously, no trace has been left um, at all. Uh, beautiful view down there, look. It's gorgeous. So, all packed up. The guy behind me is all packed up. He's gone back the other way. I'm just uh, seen him walk off. Um, Dewa mids come down really easily. Uh, there's quite a bit of a uh, breeze blowing now. Um, <laughs> and I've got to admit, I was a little bit nervous as I um, took that final peg out thinking, Jesus, if the wind catches this now, that's a hell of a lot of cash on its way to Glossop. But, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but no, it's uh, it's all gone down as easily as it went up, so I'm a happy teddy. So, along to the edge of Fairbrook Nares, down the front of Fairbrook Nares, and into 
uh, back to the car, sorry, and hope it's all in one piece and no nasty people have broken any windows or anything. It's always a trepidation when you leave your car overnight, isn't it? But nothing else you can do, really, is sort of getting the train. Anyway, I'm off. Speak to you in a bit. Fairbrook Nays. We camped along there somewhere, just along the top. And then looking along the northern edge of the plateau down to where I came up last night if this camera will expose properly. So yeah, I followed the hill up there, that seal stones at the top, and then I came along all along the top, the seal edge, and then when you get to there you have to go all the way back up and then back out to get across Fairbrook Clough which is the gully that you can see there, the clough. Um, you have to go right quite high up to cross it or you can drop down a sheer slope and back up to the side I suppose and then all the way along the top of the ridge, of the ridge, of the edge. And uh, yeah, so you get good views from this end, from this end of the Nays, you get good views out over towards Manchester um, and obviously from this side you get the view all the way down the northern edge of the plateau and into the valley with the snake pass running through there beautiful so down where you can see that sheepfold is where I crossed the river yesterday this was the path that I should have taken, um, but for some reason I was looking at the map the wrong way up, I think, and it ended up taking me across the river through that sheepfold, and then I followed that path, which I'm hoping you can make out. I can't see the camera screen because the sun's on it. Um, up the path there and around the back, and it's Gateside Clough, it's called, and it followed it right the way up to Seal Stones which actually, now that I've done it, was a really nice walk. The only downside, I don't know if you can make this out on this camera actually, you can see sort of here where the, um, down here somewhere, where the path sort of collapsed. Um, and there's a few places like that all the way along, there's just a lot of debris down there. I don't know if it's some flooding, there's like a couple of landslides. Um, it's not a pleasant walk down. Um, like I say, there's quite a lot of rubbish and stuff in the uh, in the woodland as well from uh, what are we calling them? Uh, fly campers. Um, so yeah, but that actual walk up that up to Gateside Clough and onto Seal Stones was actually really nice. So I should probably do that again. Right then, that's another wild camp come to a close. I'm heading back down into civilization now where I can see a few people milling around. I haven't seen anybody since I left camp, apart from the fellow that was along the uh, the nays from me camping, when he packed up and walked off, I haven't seen anybody all the way down here, but obviously now I'm coming back down onto the, uh, the A57, I'm going to start bumping into folks, and I get a bit nervous recording in front of people. So, another cracking night in the Peak District, really happy to have that duo made, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so. So chuffed, to be honest, absolutely over the moon. Um, so yeah, I would definitely do that little walk again up um, to Gateside Clough. Uh, as much as it was an error on my part, it was, actually, um, it was actually a good walk in the end. The only downside is this bit coming through the woods, but you know, it's not, it's not very long at all. But yeah, I do love this northern edge. It's a lot quieter and the difference from the north to the south edges is phenomenal. I mean, you go over to Edil where the paths are all really wide and there's always people around. Here, you rarely see anybody else and the paths aren't as well trodden, so they're a lot narrower and just a little bit more pleasant to walk on, I think. But um, yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching people. I hope you've enjoyed it, I'll, um, hopefully 
get back out in the Peak District or maybe beyond pretty soon. Fingers crossed. See you later, guys. Take care now. Thanks. Bye-bye.